Morning guys, we are in Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life. So we know in the Garden of Eden there was a tree of life, and um, Adam and Eve sinned. They were cast out of the garden so that they couldn't eat of the tree of life. The tree of life would have given them eternal life, but because of sin, and the wages of sin is death, they were cast out and a cherubim was put there so they couldn't get back in. But when our robes are washed by the blood of Jesus, then we are cleansed and we are set free from that sin and we are looked at uh, by God as righteous. And therefore we can partake of that tree of life and we can live forever with him. Just a couple of verses on that. Um, back to Revelation 7 verse 14. I said to him, Sir, you know, and he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And so um, without the remission of sin, without, I mean, the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And so something must die because God is just. Um, something must take the place. Because of the wage of sin is death and God is a just God and God must punish sin, something must take the place. And so an animal never fitted, quite could take the place of a human. So a, a human that was absolutely righteous had to take the place for our sin, and that was Jesus Christ. And so his blood has made us white, and he has washed all of our sins away. Hebrews nine fourteen puts it like this. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And so because we made we, we clean, we can partake of the tree of life. And then he goes on to say um, in, in verse 14 of Revelation 22, and they may enter into the city by the gates. And so only the pure, only the holy, only the righteous enter into the new Jerusalem. Going on to um, verse 15, outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the sexually immoral and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So when you come to Jesus, you washed and all those sins that you were used to do, you no longer do. And so every believer who's made, who's had their heart regenerated or they've had um, their whole mind, everything has changed. They no longer want to lie and commit sexual immorality. Um, you know, it, it says um, in Revelation earlier that all liars go to hell. But here we see it says everyone who loves and practices falsehood or practices lies. And so where there's a habitual practicing, um, we know that there hasn't been a regeneration of the heart. So Jesus hasn't changed your heart. Because if Jesus has changed your heart, you will hate lies. Um, and you will not want to lie. Just like um, it, it talks about sexual immorality. Uh, Hebrews 13 vo verse 4 it says, Marriage is to be held in honor among all, and the marriage bed is to be undefiled. For fornicators and adulterers God will judge. And so every fornicator, everyone who's committed sin, um, and, and sex is only for marriage. Anything outside of marriage is sexual immorality. So therefore God will judge for that. And therefore, um, those that, are, that are, are under that sex sin will go to hell. So again, the principle is that even if you have committed that sin, um, it's washed by the blood of Christ, but a believer will not want to partake of these sins. And it's again the heart. So the, the challenge this morning is where is your heart? Um, do you love sexual immorality? Do you love lying? Because I mean, maybe you're not born again. Maybe you're not washed by the blood of the Lamb. Um, and it's so clear here, you will not enter that city one day. You'll be part of all of these, the dogs and everything else. And so let's make sure our hearts have been changed and that we are properly regenerated. God bless.